I know, I know. Wait a second. Something's not right here. You were just making it look like you were playing. You're a phony! Hey, this guy's a great big phony! That's right, you're a big fat phony! Hey, you know who lives in this house? A great big phony! Hey guys, this is Jade Wee, and there is a new addition to the studio that is about to change everything up. I know some of you might be disappointed. Yes, I still love Dollis Jamming, but you guys know that I have a hybrid workflow now. Just because Dollis is great for jamming, but once you want to get stuff done and actually finish tracks and polish them, there's nothing like using the doll as a tool. If you want to see a full video about how Dollis am I, I'll put the link somewhere. So yes, the Native Instruments MK3. I am so hyped to have this in the studio. You might have seen people like Sounds and Gear, Accurate Beats, and Sarah 2 ill use this. And you know what? This is exactly what happened. I'm gonna tell you exactly how this happened. So on the way back from Germany, from TSR 19, me and Joe from Sounds and Gear had the same flight. And it was like an eight hour flight with connections and everything. So we were just talking the whole way there. And I knew that he used like the MK3. He makes like these awesome tutorials for them and the Ableton Push. And I've had the Push 2 and it was great. You know, it was great for using Ableton with the hardware but I felt like I still had to use the screen a lot. And that's why I sold it, because I mean, I felt like I could just do things faster with the mouse when I was using it, even though it's nicer to have the hardware, but it was just like an extra step that I was still gonna have to use the computer. So he was telling me like, no nah, man, you know, I've used the machine for like 10 years and you don't even have to look at the computer at all, like pretty much, and I'm like, what? So, you know, I started looking into it, um, checked out some of his tutorials and stuff, and now, this baby is here and I'm super stoked about it. You guys know I make all types of music. Uh, I just got this beautiful Yamaha CP. I'm gonna be making like some old classical songs that I wrote like 10 years ago that I need to recreate and have them like in history because they're my songs and they're beautiful and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy them. So that's coming and that's probably gonna be used with this. So that's gonna be some cool videos coming. You guys know I make like lo-fi and ambient. You know, I'm still gonna do like my sequencing and all that stuff dollars, but for stuff that actually requires like linear arrangement, um, definitely excited about this. So let me know, what do you guys wanna see with this? I know you guys are probably asking, but Jade, I thought you were Dallas. What about the um, MPC Live? You know, didn't you like that workflow? Or what about the Akai Force? I actually had the Akai Force for like a month and it seemed totally unusable to me and I'm about to tell you why. It's advertised as a looping station, but there is no zero crossing at the end of each sample. So every time you loop, you get that little pop at the end. So if you're looping and you're trying to create a song without having to go back and manually adjust the end of the loop every single time, I mean, it's, you, you can't. You gotta adjust the loop. Like, hey, let's say you have a long pad going and then you, you know, the, the, the loop ends, um, you're automatically gonna get that pop. And I mean, yes, that happens with audio, but there's software updates to it. Like, it used to happen to the OP1 and they fixed it, so, you know, and I don't trust the Kai to be honest with you to update anything. Like there were so many things on the MPC Live that could have been a certain way that weren't. And my biggest gripe with it was that they make you use the touch screen for whatever you're doing. So it's like, why am I gonna switch my big screen for a tiny little touch screen? You know, it has all those nice knobs on the sides and stuff. You can't even use those to like navigate through the menu. I'm like, what is this? And I don't think that they're gonna update it because that's just how it is. It's like, they have all these things that could be a certain way, but they're not. And that's my gripe with that. I had to get that off my chest to let you guys know. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. This does have the little two screens, but you're not dependent on them. From what Joe told me, everything is muscle memory, which is how I use my SP404, and I love doing it that way. So I'm excited to learn this thing. I'm excited to see what kind of music I can make with it, and I hope to see you guys along the way.